Time for the market report. This week, as we said earlier on the show, it's all about WASD and weather, supply and demand. It basically depends on the whims of weather. On a global level, that's true. And we're also keeping in supply issues as well. Markets looking up last week, closing higher than the previous on all commodities save for lumber. Let's take a look. Last week's only loss, lumber, as we said, down about $219. The reason seems to be more of the same in that industry, a slow return to pre-COVID normal. Last week's biggest gain, wheat up nearly 79 cents, all row crops up for that matter, soybeans and corn up nearly 60 cents and 33 cents respectively. This month's WASDE report dropped last week and as usual markets responded, but not as much as you might think. More on that in a bit. For now, let's dig in. U.S. wheat supplies lower due to less production and beginning stocks. All wheat production lowered 152 million bushels. Projected exports, feed, and residual use also lowered. Global wheat supplies projected to lower 5.3 million tons due to less beginning stocks in several countries and lower U.S. production. World consumption also lowered while trade slightly increased. U.S. corn beginning stocks lower due to greater feed and residual use. Corn production forecast 175 million bushels higher. That's based on increased acreage for this year. Global corn production higher, larger exports for the U.S. and Russia, and less for Mexico. Corn imports lowered for the EU and Iran. U.S. rice showing higher supplies as increased beginning stocks and imports more than offset lower production. That's due to lower acres and yield from drought in California. Global rice supplies lowered 2 million tons due to lower beginning stocks in India and less production in Egypt, EU, and the U.S. Exports raised while world consumption lowered slightly. U.S. soybean production unchanged at 4.4 billion bushels. Yield forecast also unchanged. Global soybean ending stocks raised due to higher stocks in Brazil and Argentina offsetting lower stocks in China. U.S. livestock showing less red meat and poultry production, while beef production unchanged. Beef import forecasts unchanged and exports raised. Cattle and broiler price forecasts raised. Milk production forecasts also raised. Cheese and butter price forecasts lowered from last month due to higher production. U.S. cotton harvest projected at 9% higher and production 800,000 bales higher. Consumption unchanged and ending stocks projected 400,000 bales higher. Global cotton stocks projected lower due to higher consumption. World trade projected 670,000 bales lower. So normally we'd be talking about how big an effect the WASDE report had on prices this past week. Well, they did, but there's a bigger reason, and that's ongoing drought situations in the western U.S. Wheat country not spared, which means uncertainty. That means higher prices. People like to toss out the term unprecedented so much it seems to have lost its bite, but in this case it could be the truth. Here's market analyst Angie Setzer to help us wrap our heads around the bigger picture. I don't think we've ever seen a situation quite as dire as what we're seeing in the spring wheat production areas. Um, you know, it's it's it would be like a, a 2012 on steroids sort of event. You know, if you take into consideration where we see spring wheat grown, you know, in the Canadian prairies out that way and into the Dakotas, into Minnesota, parts of Montana. I mean, that is where the heart of this uh, drought is centered. I've, I've read so much and, and I can't even imagine what we're going through up that way because a lot of folks are saying this isn't even comparable to 88. It's that bad up that way. And so, um, you know, on top of that, you're looking at the spring wheat areas of Russia where their their poor conditions are. And so it's a perfect storm. I mean, honestly, not only that, but you have somewhat of the lower um, volume in Minneapolis wheat. So you did see some of that spill over into Chicago wheat this week. Of course, there were some other issues there, you know, um, that may have helped support Chicago. But yeah, I, I don't even know if you can really put words on what exactly the situation is, you know, in, in the North Country there. And that's it for a deeper look into the markets. Looks like prices will continue to fluctuate based on weather conditions. Here in Mississippi, things are looking good so far. Let's hope that continues.